I want to read from the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 and 13. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 and 13. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their work. And so I want to give what I will call a brief sermon, a sermonette. I want to give you the topic here. The topic is your final audition. Your final audition. We've all heard of auditions. You know, someone auditions for a play. Might I say here that to make it to the final audition is your goal. And of course, to win the part is your dream come true. Well, in life, there is a final audition. Well, I should say, after this life, there is a life to come. And this will be your final audition. Now, when I say audition, I want you to also think of the word audit. Audit. An audit is defined as a noun, as this, an official inspection of an individual's or organization's accounts, typically by an independent body. As a verb, similar, conduct an official financial examination of an individual or organization's account. Businesses must be audited. It is right and it is expected in order to be a legitimate institution. What do we mean by auditing? And this I got from the internet. Audit is the examination or inspection of various books of accounts by an auditor followed by physical checking of inventory to make sure that all departments are following documented system of recording transactions. It is done to ascertain the accuracy of financial statements provided by the organization. Chartered accountants are hired to perform such audits. Well, I want you to know that all that we do in our body during this life is being recorded. God knows. God knows. Angels are recording the deeds of humanity. Malachi 3 and 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Ezekiel 9, 2 and 3. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, 
which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was going up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's ink horn by his side. That's in the Old Testament. Need I say more? Remember, God is love and God is just. God will not condemn anyone to hell who does not earn their own ticket to hell. By what you do on earth, you shall be rewarded after your time on earth is done. Let me speak briefly on these three points. Number one, your life. Your life. Number two, your liberty. Your liberty. And number three, your litigation your litigation. So let's talk about it. Point number one, your life. If you believe that God gives life, then you must understand that life is God. Life is God, his life back. All that God releases to life on earth will return to him after life is finished on earth. You have heard this scripture, NIV, Genesis 3:19. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Job 121, it reads, And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, see, we hear that at a whole lot of funerals. And we need to understand. We need the people to understand what it's saying. After this life, you will have to give an account to the one who gave you life. The grave is not the final place of a bird. It is a rest in peace place for the body. Your soul will be required of you. This life is about choices. What you do, where you go, what you say. All of this is building up a record, Lord have mercy, in heaven. All of what we do is building up a track record in heaven. Every day, you are presented with a present. Your present is a present that God gives you in order to provide you with the opportunity of choice. Hebrews 3 and 15. As it is said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the day of rebellion. Sin a person. Every day, 
you got to live in a day wherein you have the power of choice. As it were, you have the power of attorney over your own life. What you say is what will matter. What are you saying today? What are you doing today? You have the life of God within you. You have blood running warm through your veins. Your blood cells are providing life throughout your whole body. What a divine opportunity God has given you. <laughs> Takes me to point number two. Your liberty. There is the freedom of personal choice. No one can choose or unchoose for you. Put a pen in it right there. That means if your mama or your grandma or your great grandma or great grandpa or grandpa, papa, nana, if they were all Bible believing, Pentecostal, tongue talking, dancing, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized Christians, you can't make it into heaven based on their choice. During their time of life, they made their choice. And now you have a time of life to make your choice. Their record is sure. Their account has been tied up, closed. Your account is still open. And so how you decide to live, and therefore, based on how you decide to live, you are preparing for how you will live after this life is over. As we call today the present, we recognize that it is a present indeed. Every person has the liberty of hearing the gospel and then receiving or rejecting the gospel message. From Adam and Eve, we see the record of choice. From the beginning pages of the word of God, Genesis, the book of beginnings, or the book of the ghetto, we see how powerful liberty is. The irony is that you have the choice to imprison your own self or set yourself free. Well, preacher, what is prison? Prison is sin. Prison is doing things according to what the flesh desires and God said don't do. That person, you are in prison. Yes, you're roaming around the land, and you can say what you want. You can turn this off, all that. And guess what? You're still in prison. You have the power to live in a worldly mindset as a citizen of your country or to live in your country with the mindset of an ambassador or pilgrim, hey, traveling through on your way to glory land. Do I have any witnesses here that, listen, listen, I'm going to live this life on earth the best that I can. I'm going to grab some toys. I'm going to have some fun, all of that. But I promise you, I understand that this is temporary and my home, my final destination is not Bermuda. It's not anywhere you can find on a map. It's out of here. And one day, one day, this earth time will be finished. But I know I'm on my way to glory land. Hey, that's Canaan land, folks. That's our heavenly abode. 
That's our heavenly place called Canaan, our, our Beulah land. Come on, somebody. Hey, listen to these verses of Scripture from the New American Standard Bible. Hebrews 11 and 13. And all, all these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed, watch this, that they were strangers and exiles <laughs> on the earth. So when people call you strange, okay, when people call Christians strange, when sinners think we're weird, when we don't know what we're talking about, can I tell the sinner you're on point? You are absolutely on point. We ought to be strange to you because we're on our way to Canaan land. Where are you on your way to? I'm going to make heaven my home. Hey, hey, hey. Psalms 39, verse 12, it reads, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner like all my fathers. <laughs> you can't tie me down to earth when I'm heaven bound. 1 Peter 2 and verse 11, it says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul. Oh, that's why we're soldiers. That's why we're warriors with an A, uh-huh, uh, because we are in a battle because this flesh loves to give in to stuff. But we come against the flesh, hey, man, because we recognize that this, this place right here, this is not our home. The freedom of choice that you have is to decide whether you will live your best life now or whether you will live to experience the best life after life in heaven. I'm going to say this again because I see where people are at. It does not stop at the grave. When the doctor comes in and gives a time that your loved one passed on, it does not stop there. Yes, we mourn. Yes, we grieve. Yes, we are just upset and we need the comforter. But I'm gonna tell you, that's not where the story ends. While you're preparing a funeral, the one that knows Jesus Christ is partying in paradise. Their spirit is okay. The body is resting. While we're trying to dress up a body, they're in a place that they don't need a dress. While we're crying over a coffin, they're up with Jesus in paradise just rejoicing that everything they praised God about, everything they testified about, everything they believed, everything that they were called strange for and weird and crazy and stupid and idiots. Well, guess what? Your loved one that nursed Jesus Christ, they are okay. We're burying a body, but they're alive in Christ. The Lord giveth. And the Lord, if God gave life, he's taking life. So there's life after this life. I hope somebody's, I hope somebody's getting that. Uh-huh. And so as you hear this sermon, this message, you are accountable. Your liberty is not without responsibility. Bermuda, you will not be able to say that you never heard the gospel message. The record, the auditor's record, the Holy Ghost, a.k.a. the accountant general, will have the record that you heard the message. <laughs> oh, the record will state that you heard it many times over the radio, over the internet, 
on the television via cable TV. Some way you are given a moment of liberty to decide. Why? Because of number three, the litigation. Another term for litigation is trial or hearing. One day, you will stand a trial before God. Why? Because God is just. God will not sentence you to eternal damnation without showing you all the evidence of your life. You will be audited. This is your final audition. You will stand before God and nothing will be hidden as it pertains to every time you rejected the gospel message. Each time you reject Jesus is a time you will have to give an account for. There are two eternal times of judgment. There is the judgment seat of Christ. This is where Christians will stand accountable. We do not just, Christians, Christians, we do not just waltz through the gates. Get that straight. No, that's right. No, we have to give an account for how we handled every talent and every gift that God gave us. God gave it to you to bless somebody in life, to be a witness of the kingdom. You buried it, you will be audited. That's the Christian. <laughs> we Christians do not get to hear well done unless we've done well. Some of us will make it into heaven barely by the hair of our chinny chin chin. Those who accept Jesus at death's door will not have done much, if any, kingdom work. Those are the Christians. At least they're going to heaven. However, there's another judgment. This judgment time is a judgment moment for the unbelievers. So we're not all going to be at this together and going to be the unbelievers and the believers together in heaven. There is a judgment time for the unbelievers. The great white throne. Every sinner will be audited depending on your account. How will be yours? How hot Will how be? Depends on how much how you've given earth while you lived. Mm. Yeah. I can't say, I, I, I cannot say who is going to heaven or how. What I can do is implore those who are refusing Jesus to change your heart and your mind and make heaven your home. You may have to pay rent down here. However, if you have accepted Jesus and accepted that Jesus paid the price, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and you're living each day to please and honor Jesus, then your home is taken care of in eternity. Your mansion awaits you. If you have not, chosen Jesus Christ, please don't turn him away. He's knocking at your heart's door. Allow Jesus to come into your heart today and know that in the final time of auditing, you will pass the test and be allowed to enter into God's heaven. Tonight, this evening, you have heard a message. We believe in auditing the books. We trust the certified accountant in much the same way. The Holy Spirit is watching everything you do. And if you don't accept Jesus Christ, heaven will not be yours. You will have a different type of funeral. Because those that see you 
in the coffin, if they're a Christian, they won't see you again. These are times, perilous times, end times. I invite you to make Jesus your choice. You haven't tried him, try him. Somebody else told you about their experience, that's their experience. You try him. Understand that we can't make it to heaven based on anybody else. You've got, this is independent. Bermuda, so a lot of people apparently want independence. This is the ultimate independence, making your choice to choose Jesus. So if you know not Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you would like to accept him into your heart, you don't have to come into church to do so. You can do so right where you are right now. Young boy, young girl, teenage boy, teenage girl. You've never even been to church that way. But if something is tugging at your heart, that, he is the Holy Spirit. And you may not understand everything fully, but I want you to try God right now. Repeat this prayer after me to receive Jesus into your heart. Dear God, God, I thank you for this day. It is a present you gave to me. God, I am a sinner, yet I believe that you sent your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. And so I choose today to make Jesus my Lord, my Savior, and my soon coming King. Thank you, God, for washing away my sins. And now I am so glad to be a part of the family of God. This is my prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you did that, congratulations, welcome home, welcome to the family of God. The most important thing is, is that now you find yourself at a Bible teaching, preaching, believing church that teaches according to the word of God. Please find yourself at that place. Of course, it would be awesome if you chose Shekinah Worship Center. Surely you know you know what we say, what we stand for, and you know that we are a voice in Bermuda that stands firmly on the word of God without fear of mankind. I would want to join a church like that. So we welcome you. Again, this Sunday we'll be in at 10 a.m. Come on by. You will be blessed. I pray tonight that as Hamilton Parish, you have heard this message, that you make your calling and election sure. Someone who was breathing yesterday is not breathing today. We only can live so long on this earth, and then there is eternity. Thank you again for allowing us this time to spend with you in your home, and we are praying for you. We want Jesus to be the head of your home. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That means we will worship him. Amen. Social media, God bless you. And thank you for tuning in. It's our sentiments and prayer. Blessings abound. Amen. 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 Auditors, folks. Auditors. Keep your book straight. Anything that is on earth is a mere imitation, a bad imitation in most cases, of what goes on in heaven. And so we've got to get this mindset and understand there's auditing going on. And, and the Holy Spirit, don't miss a beat. His records will never have to be checked by anybody else. Amen? Amen. God bless you.